In times like these, you, it, to, to not know is to be deceived and to be destroyed because there are so many things that are happening and Satan knows how to disguise himself. And I, I, if there's ever been a day where believers have to be savvy from college students to senior citizens, even, I find, even in the third and fourth and fifth grades because they are targeting uh, our, our children. The, the church has to be in the business of informing people, informing people so that we know how to recognize and combat the enemy. You know, speaking of the devil, um, there is a piece of legislation, and I'll uh, say this quickly, um, that, that passed the House on Wednesday, March the 13th. It passed um, the House. Um, Nancy Pelosi introduced the so-called Equality Act. It passed the House of Representatives. Um, um, uh, the, the yeas were 236, the nays was 173. Um, 228 Democrats voted for it. Eight Republicans voted for it. 173 Republicans voted against it. It passed the House. It has not gotten through Congress, the Senate yet. The House has passed the Congress, but it hasn't gotten uh, through the Senate, and I pray that it doesn't. And if it does somehow pass the Senate, which I pray that it dies in the Senate, um, um, if Mitch McConnell don't just keep, uh, just let it die on the sidelines. But uh, uh, if it passes, uh, the current president says that he would veto it. And I pray that if it passed the Senate, that it doesn't pass with a veto-proof majority. And here is why every believer should be against this. It, this, this sexual, this so-called Equality Act is a bill that would add sexual orientation and gender identity as a protected class. Where the original Civil Rights Act of 1964 furthered equality by ensuring that African Americans had equal access and public accommodations and material goods, the Equality Act would further inequality by penalizing everyday Americans for their beliefs about marriage and biological sex. Did you ever believe that we'd ever live in a day where we would have to use the term biological sex? It just used to be sex because everybody, you know, most people understood uh, bi biology determines your sex. We, n we, we never thought that we would live in a day where people can determine their sex by their thinking. I think I'm a girl, so therefore I am one, and therefore you must call me one and must treat me like one. And if this law is passed, if you fail to call me one, then you're in trouble. But if tomorrow I decide to go back to being a boy, then you got to call me a man and treat me that way. And the next day if I go back, so forth and so on. It's crazy. But these are the times in which we live. And I'll tell you what it would do to African Americans. It would make the gains that we got in the 64, 1964 Voting Rights Acts, the gains that was, was given to us would be erased. So no person of color and no Christian, no person of color, no African American should uh, be for this. And the way they try to fool black folk is they come after us and say, well, you know, you were discriminated against. No one should be discriminated against. And, 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 and our people who are not thinking go, well, you know, that is right. So I'm against discrimination. But discrimination in and of itself is not a bad thing. To discriminate means to decide. To decide, that's what it means, to decide. To distinguish between two things, good or bad. We discriminate every day. But you're not supposed to discriminate on the basis of race. You can't look at me and assume that I can't afford the house 
or I shouldn't be able to sit at, at a bar or I shouldn't have uh, equal access to a facility based solely on the color of my skin, which was the injustice of our country. Now what we're trying to do is vote into law deviant behavior. Amen. And then compare that deviant behavior and say it's like being black. The Equality Act would further inequality, would further inequality by penalizing everyday African Americans for their beliefs about marriage and biological sex, similar sexual orientation and gender identity laws at the state and local level have already been used this way. Here are five groups, and I'll do this quickly, that have been harmed by the Equality Act. First and foremost, employers and workers. The Equality Act would force employers and workers to conform to new sexual norms or else they will lose their business and jobs. This is already happening on the state and local level. The most high profile example involves a Colorado baker, Jack Phillips, whose case went all the way to the Supreme Court after the Colorado, after the Colorado Civil Rights Commission accused him of discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation when he declined to create a cake for a same-sex wedding. He didn't create, bake the cake for a same-sex wedding because he don't believe in same-sex marriage, and he was sued, and he had to go all the way to the Supreme Court. Now, he ultimately prevailed, but do you know how much money that cost him? Do you not know how these kind of laws will uh, discourage new businesses? There are some wonderful bakers in here. If anybody cannot bake, uh, Sister Morgan, I haven't met him, but, uh, but uh, listen, uh, if you may want to go into baking and, and do that, that 10, lev 10 level layer chocolate cake, but then if you think, well, wait a minute, they may want me to do this for a same-sex wedding, and I'm a, member, I'm a member of Upper Room. I can't, I can't do, make a design like that. Then you got to take all your savings, all your money, all your profits, and fight it all the way to the Supreme Court. He's not the only victim. Other cases involving disagreement over the meaning of marriage feature florists, bakers, photographers, wedding uh, venue owners, photographers, uh, video, videographers, and website designers, and, and all kinds of public servants. These people are affected by this law. Also, medical professionals, those of you who are in the medical profession, the Equality Act would force hospitals and insurers to provide and pay for these therapies against any moral or medical objections. If the doctor thought it was a bad idea to do a sex change operation on a 12-year-old, the, the Equality Act would force him to have to do it. It would publicize it would publicize medicine by forcing professionals to act against their best medical judgment and provide transition-affirming therapies. The fight is already here. Look at this. Catholic hospitals in California and New Jersey have been sued for declining to perform hysterectomies on otherwise healthy women who want to become male. So the woman goes in and says, because I want to be a man, give me a hysterectomy. They said, there's nothing wrong with your ovaries. I don't care. I want them out because I want to be a man. Any good doctor with a good conscience would say, I can't do that. But if this would pass and, and these cases are already uh, uh, in play, you get in trouble by saying to a perfectly healthy woman with perfectly healthy ovaries, ma'am, I don't want to do this to you. She can claim discrimination. And by the time you get through paying, whether you win the lawsuit or not, whether you win or not, you're broke. A third Catholic hospital in Washington, D.C. settled out of court when the ACLU sued them for declining to perform, listen to this, ladies, a double mastectomy on a gender dysphoric 16-year-old girl. A 16-year-old girl wanted both of her breasts Remove. The Catholic Church said, baby, this is not good. You don't want that. You don't want that. 
and the ACLs, the ACLU sued them, uh, and and the, and the hospital had to settle out of court. Not only will the Equality Act uh, uh, affect profession, medical professionals and, uh, and, and, and uh, also workers and employees, but parents. The, polit the politicization of medicine would ultimately harm families by normalizing hormonal and surgical interventions for gender dysphoric children as well as ideological education in schools and other public venues. 80 to 85 percent of children, 80 to 85 percent of children with gender dysphoria no longer feel distress by their bodies after puberty. That is a fancy way of saying they grow out of it. They grow out of it. Just, you know, I wish somebody would tell old Dwayne Wade, they grow out of it. 80 to 85 percent after puberty. Yet activists continue to push their own radical protocols, social transition as young as four years of age. Puberty, look at this, puberty blocking drugs as young as nine. So if the boy thinks he's a girl, they give him drugs that block his production of testosterone, increase his estrogen so as to promote this wickedness. Because you know why they're doing that? Because they know that the children will grow out of it. So what they do is we're going to ensure that you don't by giving you drugs. And the kids got dummies for parents. Dummies for parents. That, that'll preach right there. Dummies for parents. Dummies for parents. Cross sex hormones as young as 14 and surgery by 18 or in some cases even younger. This protocol could, could become mandatory in the future if this thing lasts. By, look at this, the latest issue of the American Journal of Bi Bio Edit, Bioethics excuse me, includes an article arguing that, that the state could, could overrule the parents of gender dysphoric children who do not consent to giving them puberty blocking drugs. So if the parents say, well, you're not going to give my boy drugs that would block his testosterone development and further his estrogen so he grow boobs and all that. The state could overrule the parent. The next group, I'm not doing it all because I have limited time. The next group would be, who would be, this, would be affected is women. The Equality Act would eliminate would ultimately lead to the erasure, the, the erasing of women by dismantling sex-specific facilities, sports, and other female-only spaces. Sexual orientation and gender identity laws that open up sex-specific facilities like bathrooms, locker rooms, you know, when, when people had brains, they thought it was a good idea for women to go to the women's room and men to go to the men's room. How did we determine who was a lady and who was a man? We were pretty sure that if he was swinging. And if he could use a urinal standing up, in times past, you was 100% sure that's a fella. Everything has changed. Sexual orientation and gender identity laws 
that open up sex-specific facilities, bathrooms, locker rooms, etc., to members of the opposite sex, enable sexual ladies sexual assaults. For example, Pesca Thomas was forced to remove her child from school after a classmate assaulted her five-year-old daughter in the girl's restroom. The boy had access to the girl's restroom because the school's policy grants, that grants students access to private facilities on the basis of self-identity and gender identity. So the boy had a perfect right to go into the bathroom. All I can say about stuff like this is, it seems like to me they, they know whose children to pick. So I'm, I'm gonna tell you something. See, you're talking about stuff that make you take the law into your own hands. See, that's the kind of stuff that creates lawlessness. You see, you see, people, it's literally, literally me, these people know who to pick on. I wonder why are these children's daddies? That's what I wonder. When I hear about certain kinds of abuse, the first thing that comes to my mind is, why is the daddy? Something daddy ought to handle. Then call the police. Do you want us to edit that? Don't edit a thing. Administrators refuse to change the policy despite Thomas's complaints. Federal authorities are now investigating the incident. The concern with these policies is that predators take advantage of the laws to gain access to victims. Policies like these make women less likely to report the incidents and, uh, and law enforcement less likely to get involved for fear of being accused of discrimination. So the lady don't report it. The laws don't, the, the, the law enforcement don't get involved because it's discrimination. These policies also leave women at a disadvantage in specific sports and other activities. Two biological males who identify and compete as women easily took first and second place at the Connecticut State Track Championships. Selena Soul, a former, a female runner, Selena, a female runner, lost a race and the chance to be, look at this, to be scouted by college coach, coaches and selected for an athletic scholarship because she came in third. She lost a college opportunity. She lost being scouted. And she said this, quote, we all know the outcome of the race before it even starts. She said, quote, she says, it's demoralizing because men should not be able to do that. But women, women, just know, just know when you're promoting all this progressiveness and these leftist policies, you, you're, <laughs> you're supporting people we're making life mighty hard for you. Amen. And this thing destroys Title IX, which was meant to ensure that women would have the same opportunities as men in sports. But this kills Title IX because now the man can just say, I'm a woman, and he competes in the sports with women. And win every time. Lastly, who these, this, this thing will hurt is nonprofits and volunteers. The Equality Act would hurt charities, volunteers, and the population they serve. State and local sexual orientation and gender identity laws have shut down numerous faith-based adoption and foster care agencies across the country in Pennsylvania, New York, Illinois, California, Massachusetts, and the uh, District of Columbia, these states wrongly treat the belief that children do best with both parents, a mother and a father. They call that discrimination. When we used to call it common sense. Kids are the ones who are paying the price. 
with 438,000 children languishing in foster care nationwide. We need more agencies working to help kids find homes, not fewer. Now charities admit that admit the reality of biological sex are under attack too. If you are a charity and you acknowledge that if you're born a male, you're a male, and if you're born a female, you're a female, you come under attack for even admitting that you believe that. These people are crazy. Anchorage, Alaska. In Anchorage, Alaska, a biological male twice tried to gain access to the city's downtown Hope Center, a shelter for homeless, abused, and trafficked, trafficked women. The men tried to get in there. In response, the individual sued the center for alleged gender identity discrimination. A federal sexual orientation and gender identity law could force any charity to open up private facilities, including sex-specific bathrooms, showers, and sleeping areas to members of the opposite sex. I tell you these things, my friends, because this is, these truths are the true definition of being woke. Tap your hands for Jesus and give God the praise. And every, I can say this without fear of violating any uh, laws uh, about uh, uh, nonprofits, because they'll tell you, every Democrat running is in support of this. They'll tell you. They say it. So I can say what they say. Vote for who you want to. But they'll tell you. They're in support of this. I'm not. God is not even.